Hello. Today's guest is Rita Hurd Days. She is the chairwoman of the St. Louis County Council today on The Bernie Hayes Show. Welcome back. My guest is Rita Heard Days. Ms. Days, how are you? I'm doing fine, Bernie. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, it's you're always terrific. a good you're opportunity looking... to just chat with you. Oh, it's my pleasure. Always my pleasure. Uh, there's so many things I want to talk to you about. Uh, I got a statement here. It says, Chairwoman Days continues her fight for transparency and the protection of employees of St. Louis County. It says, in 2020, St. Louis County's Human Relations Committee came before the county council requesting that St. Louis's county current legislation on whistleblower protection be updated as it offers less protection than is and not aligned with Missouri state statutes as it relates to protecting those St. Louis County employees who report misdeeds and illegal activities in St. Louis County government. And it says Chairwoman Days immediately acted on those recommendations and drafted whistleblower legislation. Could you tell us about that, Ms. Days? Absolutely. Sure. It's, uh, it has what came to my attention from the uh, Human Relations Commission that our whistleblower uh, statute was out of, uh, out of compliance with what state statute uh, said. And so our ordinances were, uh, I guess you'd say, old. They weren't, have not been updated since the 70s. And so I put together legislation. Uh, of course, that's the way we do it. We uh, ask our council to put together uh, legislation that we think would be appropriate. Uh, to address that issue, and that's what I did. I did that back in uh, March, uh, Bernie, and uh, to this day, we have not been able to get that legislation uh, enacted into law. It has passed uh, at least two times. It has passed uh, our legislative body, and the county executive has vetoed that legislation at each time. So it's disheartening to hear that, but at the end of the day, the protection of the people that work for St. Louis County is paramount. Uh, we want to make sure that there, uh, uh, the retribution and the, uh, the antagonistic kinds of behavior uh, on, on the supervisors, you know, on, on those folks who have to come to work every day just for maybe disagreeing or not necessarily um, uh, thinking that uh, what they're doing is in line or legal or things like that. Yes. And so I, I think it's, it's time to, to make sure that our employees are protected. And that's what that legislation is trying to do. Are you hopeful and optimistic that it might finally pass? Well, I'm going to continue on. I mm -hmm. want the uh, employees of St. Louis County to know that there is someone there that's fighting for them so that when they come to work, they don't have to hold their heads down. You know, they don't have to try to hide and not see things that they really see. I, I think that's important. We want people to come to work, to be happy coming to work, uh, and, and to be comfortable in positions. But we've had several lawsuits filed uh, because people have raised issues with some things that have gone on. And and, and they have been released from their duties. So that's just not right. Right. As a chairperson of the St. Louis County Council, what are your specific duties? Well, I, I manage the meetings. I, I say manage. <laughs> Uh, but I, I call the meetings to order. I called all of the uh, committees of the hold uh, to order. That Those are kind of the committees that we have outside of the regular legislative um, meetings on Tuesdays at 630. So I chair all of those and uh, making sure that we try to bring consensus uh, to issues. If something is a little troubling, call a committee so that we can have people to talk about it and kind of air out what, what, they, um, what they see here is happening. So it's, um, it's a very, um, I, I, it's a difficult position because even though we are only seven people, uh, trying to kind of guide seven people in the same direction can be a little challenging at times. The mask mandate in St. Louis County, what's its status? We are in, we do have a mask mandate. The last lawsuit that was filed by the attorney general was not successful. So at this particular point, we do have a mask mandate uh, in St. Louis County. I noticed that, that uh, the state attorney general wants to sue school districts who <laughs> compel their children to wear a mask. Where do you stand on that? Well, I don't think that the, uh, the attorney general has uh, the authority 
over the schools in the first place. I, I served on the school board for nine years in the Normandy School District. And so pretty much policies and things like that are left to the elected boards. So I'm not sure why he thinks that this is something that um, he can affect. It's almost like St. Louis County. We really don't have any, um, any authority over the local school districts. Those are governed by their own bodies. Mm -hmm. Also, you were uh, the election commissioner, Democratic elect commissioner for the St. Louis County County, St. Louis County Council for the St. Louis County. I got to get that right. Board of Elections. Board of Election Commission, <laughs> yes. right. And uh, so you've had much experience in this. <laughs> Ms. Days, tell me why the Republican Party is trying to restrain people from voting. I don't understand it. Well, it is disheartening to know that we have fought so long and hard for voting rights, particularly for African American people. I think that most folks understand the, um, the impetus for trying to delay or trying to uh, keep black people from voting. Uh, they understand that we are a solid voting block. And basically, when we are supportive of issues or people, uh, they're successful. And I, I think that's a very strong uh, position that we hold. And so anything that uh, folks can do to kind of minimize or dilute that kind of power is what they're willing to do. It's, it's, this is 2022, and we're still fighting issues that we fought back in the 50s and 60s and 70s. And I, I think that at this particular point, it's, it's a travesty. Uh, and, and, and in D.C., of course, basically the Republicans opposed to this, but I'm, I'm, I'm concerned that we have two Democrats who uh, could not make the transition to make sure that the Voting Rights Act was, uh, was put on the, on the boards and, and put in, into law. So that, that's very troubling to me that we have that kind of pushback, particularly from some of our own. Because if Democrats stood together on this, we could have, we could have made this happen. Yeah, Cinema and Manchin, they, are, they look like they're queen and king uh, of the Senate, it looks like. And right now, they're in the, they're in the catbird seat. We yeah. know how these numbers are. It's a 50-50 body. And uh, the tiebreaker would be uh, Kamala Harris, our vice president, sure. uh, also a sorrow of mine. I had to throw that one in there, Bernie, for you. Of course. And, uh, and, and so uh, it, it could have been done. It could have been done, but not being able to marshal all your forces on your party, um, it, it's, it's concerning at this point. When it failed the other day, what was your personal feelings when the John well, Lewis voting right? To be honest, it, it was like a kick in the gut. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I said to, uh, we had a Martin Luther King program uh, in Wilson and Pine Lawn, and, and I remember when folks had to go to, and I'm from the South, I'm from Louisiana, and we had a lady that was trying to vote, and she had to recite the preamble. And she had to recite that to some people who could barely read. And so I know what that means to people who look like me to try to get to the polls and vote. So that means that African Americans are really going to have to try to get another strategy in doing that. We're going to almost have to go to the, the boycotts of Selma and making sure that whatever we have to do to get people to those polls, we have to do that, whether they're bus rides or we have caravans or, you know, making sure that registrations are in order. And, and, and that's a lot of what I did uh, at the Board of Elections in St. Louis County. Yes. A lot of people in Atlanta, Wisconsin, Arizona have been, actually those uh, electors have been threatened. Were you threatened or was your... No, I, intimidated I, when you were a I, I was never uh, I, I was mm -hmm. never threatened on that level. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's um, and I think back in those days, it was not as tense uh, as it is today. Uh, that that was uh, several, several years ago, maybe eight or 10 years ago. But we have gotten to the point where, you know, we can marshal forces at the at the uh, at, with a text. We can marshal folks to um, uh, gather at a certain point. Uh, and so I think right now with social media, it's much more dangerous uh, as we're looking at how these elections are put together. And yeah. people are just on edge. People are on edge about everything these days. This is great. Rita Heard Days is my guest. Uh, she's uh, so many former state senator. I mean, she's done almost everything in government. And uh, I know she has so much support here in the St. Louis metropolitan area. She's the council. Uh, chair of the St. Louis County Council right now. And uh, we're here at the New Life Evangelistic Center, 2428, which is enrolled in Overland, Missouri. And we'll be back with County Chair Rita Heard Days after this. It's cold outside. 
And that's why New Life Evangelistic Center needs you to be a prayer warrior, a partner supporting this work that sends out first responders daily. So many people are out in the cold. They need gloves, and we need you to bring those gloves to 2428 Woodson Road in Overland, Missouri, 806 North Jefferson in Springfield. So many homeless people depend upon New Life Evangelistic Center for sleeping bags, warm clothes, your prayers at this particular time. We need a financial miracle because we find people out in the cold that have literally nowhere else to go. We have to put them immediately into motels. That costs a lot of money. We need you to be praying for such at this time. We need a financial miracle at New Life Evangelistic Center. Not only keep the safe houses open, but also to provide uh, motels for married couples, for people that are suffering. Please send your gifts now to New Life Evangelistic Center, P.O. Box 473, St. Louis, Missouri, 63166. You can also call us at 314. 421-3020. Hear this, you who trample the needy and do away with the poor of the land. Let justice roll on like a river, righteousness like a never-failing stream. You trample on the poor and force him to give you grain. Therefore, though you have built stone mansions, you will not live in them. Though you have planted lush vineyards, you will not drink their wine. For I know how many are your offenses and how great your sins. You oppress the righteous and take bribes, and you deprive the poor of justice in the courts. Seek good, not evil, that you may live. Then the Lord God Almighty will be with you, just as you say he is. Hate evil, love good. Welcome back. I am Bernie Hayes. My guest is the chairperson for the St. Louis County Council, Rita Hurd Days. Uh, Ms. Days, um, you're up for re-election, aren't you? I am. This will be my uh, first uh, election uh, for a complete term. I uh, filled a incomplete uh, term when uh, Hazel Irby, uh, my predecessor, stepped down to take a job with the county executive and uh, she asked me to run and so I completed uh, her unexpired term. And so mm -hmm. this is my first one uh, going for a full four-year term, yes. And how, how can they reach you and support you? Well, we have uh, the, on the uh, screen there. Uh, it's Rita at RitaDays.com. That's my website. Mm -hmm. And the uh, phone number is 314-722-6628. Mm -hmm. And so um, it, it, it's an honor to serve uh, Bernie. Uh, and I've done this, as you said, you know, House and Senate. I've served on school boards. And, and I look at this as a public servant. I'm a public servant. And a lot of people, well, you know, <clears throat> politicians and that kind of thing. And that's part of it. But when, when I look at this and I, I think that my job is to assist people in whatever way that I can and to promote policies that, that assist our electorate. And I, I keep that at the forefront of what I do every day. Is this good for the citizens of St. Louis County? And so, so far I've been successful in that and, and that mantra has carried me a long way. Uh, in this business, and we know how volatile this business can be. But I, I'm, I'm very happy with where I am and the positions that I take. I'm, I'm very uh, comfortable with those. And I say to people all the time, I sleep well at night because I think I'm doing the right thing. Well, you know, I've noticed all the support that you've gathered, gathered. Uh, there, especially ladies, la lady mayors now, you know, <laughs> Mayor Pylon, Normandy, Ferguson, and uh, all these are good, you're good friends, aren't they? Absolutely, and mm -hmm. we, we have coalesced around issues. We know that North County has been left out of, of much in terms of economic development, in terms of housing, uh, in terms of job creation. Uh, North County just seems to be on the back burner, and uh, so it's my job to make sure that we bring North County up to what it needs to be along with the other, uh, other parts of the county. And uh, we know that when we, when we raise up North County, all the other areas go up as well. And so that's my mission. That's my mission to make sure that North County citizens have what they need in order to survive. This is a wonderful place to, to work, uh, to live, uh, and as well as to play. And so we need to make sure that whatever happens for the rest of the county also happens in North County. Is the, the COVID-19 pandemic uh, on, on your radar? Are you, what do you plan to do about that? 
Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I, I, for, for years and years, uh, going back to the House of Representatives, I have supported health care for all. I've supported uh, single-payer uh, health care, and the closest we've ever come to that uh, is Obamacare. And I, I recognize that these things take long, but COVID-19 has exacerbated my community, basically because we have a lot of uh, unmet needs, if you will. We have a lot of comorbidity issues that no one is facing. We look at the higher rates of diabetes and hypertension and obesity, and those are all prevalent in the African-American community, and that's basically what my, uh, my district is. And so health care is paramount, and this is what I, I push all the time, that we have to make sure that we take care of the health of the citizens of the first district. Although you're the chairperson of the county council, you also represent the first district. Is that correct? That's correct. What are the, what are the boundaries and what is, what's your vision for that district? Basically for city limits on the uh, east to a little of Overland to the west. Uh, north, I take in a little of uh, Hazelwood and a little of Florissant. Uh, a little of a uh, Bell Fountain neighbors, and uh, and of course uh, the south is uh, is Delmar. That's a little part of Delmar. It's kind of gerrymandered in, around in there, uh, but we also know that redistricting is is upon us, and so we're waiting on the courts to decide exactly where the new district will lie. So I'm hoping that it's basically in the same area. Okay, what's your vision for that district? I'm sorry. What's the district? What's what's your vision for Council District Number One? District One. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, what's your, what are your plans? What are your visions well, for that? Well, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, that's uh, economic development, looking okay. at jobs. I was at um, um, an opening yesterday with uh, the county executive and the governor, and we're opening a, um, a snack um, redistribution center, I think is what it's called, Fifth Avenue. And... Mm -hmm. um, 8th Avenue. It might be 8th Avenue. And, uh, and that's 300 jobs. 300 jobs is playing over $16 an hour. And so we're looking at it, Boeing at expansion. We're looking at, um, we have an Amazon a fulfillment center in the first district. So we're really trying to make sure that we bring up the, the economics for people to have good jobs, to um, be able to afford uh, nice homes and health care. So it's a lot of things. It's a very diverse district. We have um, million dollar homes and we have, you know, uh, affordable homes. Uh, so it runs a gamut. And so that means I have to be diversified in my approach to looking at the issues that are facing folks in the first. Okay, let's be specific. Are you running for re-election to be St. Louis County Council person or for just for the, your district? Council one. Yes, for the this? first district. Okay. Uh, the chair is elected by the body, mm -hmm. and I was very fortunate to be reelected uh, in January uh, to chair. So this will be my second term serving as chair. But uh, but I'm I'm running for the first district council person. Mm -hmm. And how can they reach you again and help you? That would be three one four. Uh, 722 6628 is the phone number. And of course, the website is Ritter at RitterDays.com. Mm -hmm. I mentioned so many of the women mayors, but you have also support from males also. Tell oh, us absolutely. About some of the absolutely. You have. I do yeah. not discriminate yeah. when it comes to support. So. Mm -hmm. so, what kind of support do you really need? To help you well, become I, I, I really need to, uh, people to understand what it is that I do, the experience that I have at, at this particular point. I think it's paramount in making sure that you get what you need. This is not a training opportunity. Uh, COVID-19, housing, economic development, uh, we need people there who can, can uh, make sure that these things happen for the district. And, and that's what I bring. I bring experience, a lot of experience to this position. And so I'm very, very pleased that I've had the, the long career uh, in, in public service, but uh, four more years is what I'm looking for right now. You know, last time we spoke, uh, we talked about how religious you were. I used to tell you that every place I go, I, especially the church I went to, or a religious <laughs> meeting, there you were. So, but how, how has COVID restricted your 
church going or, or whatever. Really tremendously, doing. tremendously. Uh -huh. You know, yeah. I, I cannot go. And, and again, that's, that's part of and part and parcel of what we do as a people. Mm -hmm. You know, we are social people. You know, we like to come together at church and we hug and, and you know, we shake hands and uh, we give each other the support they need to make it through another week. And I will tell you, it has been very challenging not to go into that building. And so we have to do it now by, uh, virtually, which is just not the same. And uh, mm -hmm. but I'm, I'm hoping that we can get past that. We can get back into, you know, where I can uh, in, in person hear the wonderful singing that we have in New Sunny Mount and and all the other churches that I attend, because I I did try to uh, get around to the different churches, different face, uh, you know, just right in the district, just to make sure that um, I'm in touch with the people. That's in my mind, that's what it's all about, Bernie. It's being with the people. Yeah, and, and last time we spoke, uh, you were talking about your faith, and your, your personal faith. Just briefly, could you tell us about that? Well, that is, um, I, I go a long way. I was raised in the church, uh, in the community that I serve, everything uh, that happened in the community happened around uh, around the uh, the church. But uh, coming through and right now at the age I am, I have seen how God has been uh, e extremely important in my life. Uh, he has, uh, and people say, well, how do you know that they order the steps? But I know my steps have been ordered by God. I, uh, there are several mistakes that I could have made and, and the directions were there uh, to go a different route. And I know that's nothing but God giving me what I need to do, keeping me healthy, keeping me uh, physically and mentally healthy so I can do what I need to do to help the people. And I think that the only thing and the only way that that can happen is through prayer and, and a belief in, in God. We'll be back with the chairperson of the St. Louis County Council, Rita Heard, days after this. The Bernie Hayes program is uh, produced at NLEC TV uh, right here at 2428 Woodson Road in Overland, Missouri. It's our new headquarters since they closed the 1411 Locust building. We're working to get back into that building. In addition to that, trying to help so many people through a wide variety of safe houses, training programs, transportation assistance, so many ways people are getting help because of all of you that are supporting the work of New Life Evangelistic Center. Now, if you'll send a gift of $25 or more, we want to send you this special, the Bernie Hayes Show Cup. And we're giving that to people. It's just a way of saying thank you. So when you send your gift, request a cup. We'll be happy to get it off to you. It's New Life Evangelistic Center, P.O. Box 473, St. Louis, Missouri. That's 63166. You can give online at nlecstl.org. Now I'm really asking all of you to join us in praying. The needs are so phenomenal at this particular time. So many hurting and homeless people are contacting us daily, but we're able to help them because of each one of you that are praying, caring, and sharing at this time. Tell your families and friends about NLEC TV and get directly involved yourself. In the heat of the night. Our subject for today is Sidney Poitier, who was born February the 20th, 1927 in Miami. In No Way Out, 1950, he played a doctor. In Cry the Beloved Country, in 1952, he appeared as a young priest. He also starred in The Defiant Ones, A Raisin in the Sun, and Lilies of the Field, and was always upright. He became the first black man to win the best Oscar for Lilies of the Field. He supported the Civil Rights Movement in the 1960s and later the Anti-Apartheid Movement. He broke ground in many movies by falling in love with white women such as Paris Blues and Guess Who's Coming to Dinner, Sidney Poitier, whose portrayal of resolute heroes in films like To Serve With Love and The Heat of the Night, established him as Hollywood's first black matinee idol. In 2009, President Obama awarded Poitier for the Presidential Medal of Freedom, the nation's highest civilian honor. Poitier died January the 6th, 2022. Sidney Poitier. So many people are being left on the streets homeless all day long without anywhere to go because downtown St. Louis continues to fight efforts to reopen 14 Level Locust. Yes, the downtown neighborhood organization that has continued to fight the New Life Evangelistic Center for the reopening of 1411 Locust and lobbied the Slay administration, the Crudison administration to keep it closed and close it down must be strongly resisted at this particular time. 
We have a new mayor. I believe she cares about the homeless. Tashara Jones needs our support. If you'll join me in prayer over this, if you'll join me in resisting these special interest groups, if you want to believe the time for action is now, please contact me. I'm Larry Rice at P.O. Box 473, St. Louis, Missouri, 63166. You can call me at 314-421-3020. I thank God for faithful viewers of Bernie Hayes, and now the time for action has come. Welcome back. My guest is the chairperson for the St. Louis County Council, Rita Heard Days, and uh, she's chosen a life of public service, but she's also chosen a life of faith. Uh, Ms. Days, one of your concerns is public housing and housing in general. Tell us about that. Well, with, uh, with COVID-19, we've had a lot of people who are facing evictions. We've received monies from the federal government called ERAP funds, uh, Emergency Rental Assistance Program, uh, to make sure that we p keep people in their homes. And basically, these are, are low-income families uh, that need, uh, need extra support, during, particularly during this time of COVID. And so we have, we're having difficulty in getting the word out that we have funds available uh, for people who need assistance. It's a landlord as well as tenant-based. They have to come together and apply for these particular loans. Uh, not necessarily, not loans, I'm sorry, that's, that's the wrong word. Particularly, just apply for this money that is there for, for, for that particular uh, population. And we don't need to let this money you know, no, go back or go to some other need. We have to address uh, making sure that people stay in their homes. And basically, these are rentals right now. But uh, we, we also have to get on the mortgage assistance because there are people who own their homes and they're having difficulty with COVID and not being able to get out. Some people have lost their jobs. And so it's important that we address a housing in, in St. Louis County. And particularly, again, I'm, I'm, I'm only advocating for the first right here because mm -hmm. that's my district. But I yeah. think disproportionately we are affected by that. How can we reach you as a chairperson on the St. Louis County Council? Well, my uh, uh, office number, and I don't have that right at hand, uh, is 314-615-5436. Uh, I don't get a chance to call myself very often. <laughs> exactly. uh, so thank you for putting that up there. But again, 314-615-5436. I sent flyers out to all the mayors. I represent uh, about 40 municipalities in this district, and I sent out flyers to all the mayors letting them know about that program. But it's extremely important. And housing is paramount in terms of being successful as a unit, as a family unit, and we know how important that is. And you have a website also, right? Yes. It's, uh, our, well, we changed that. So it's rdays at stlouisco.com. Okay. rdays at stlouisco.com. And I must tell the people who are viewing us that uh, when they call you, you actually answer. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why that's such a big deal, I tell yeah. you. It, it really isn't when I'm in the office, but, you know, now that COVID, you know, we're spending very little time in the office, uh, and so that, that creates another problem. So we're trying to get those phones transferred to the computer so that either I or my assistant can answer them, you know, right away. But we're, we're challenged. This is a challenging time for, for America and, of course, for St. Louis County. With your education and background, you chose public service. Give me a brief overview of why. Growing up, uh, Bernie was, was a community spirit. And we knew that uh, it was segregated. And so we knew that when we helped our citizens, when we helped our, our community, when we helped our neighbors, that was the only thing that we were taught. If one had and the other one didn't, there was no such thing. Each would have a half of that piece of pie if there was on, only one piece of pie left. So I've grown up with, with public service. My mother was a teacher, and in those days, teachers didn't make a lot of money, but you know they were able to give to the community, to give what they had. I remember my mother tutoring children. This was outside of the regular classroom time, you know, and going to activities and making sure the Girl Scouts and the church and all those kinds of things were part of our community. And and so just giving back to the community is what I was born with. And so I guess you would say it's part of my DNA. And it's carried me through all these years uh, to make sure that I do what I need to do uh, in terms of serving others. That's what it's all about at the end of the day. I'd like to wish you good luck on your re-election campaign. 
and I want to say thank you for all that you do as chairperson of the St. Louis County Council. And thank you so much for visiting us here at the New Life Evangelist Center. Good and luck. thank you. Thank you so much for your support and, and for all that you do. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much. And please stay safe. Thank you. You as well. Thank you. And each and every one of you, please, if you're not vaccinated, get your shots. I'm Bernie Hayes. Have a great day.